So I got a video request from one of my viewers, also one of my Miata buddies here in town, to show you how you can actually delete the charcoal canister. It's uh, part of the EVAP system. These cars are over 20 years old now, so the EVAP system can actually give you issues. You'll get a check engine light if your EVAP system begins to fail, and the one failure point, other than say like a leaking line or uh, uh, fitting coming loose would be the charcoal canister. By now the charcoal canister is completely shot. It's not going to do you any good anyway. It can actually become clogged and prevent EVAP gases from going back building up pressure in the EVAP system and you'll get the EVAP flow code on the dash in the check engine light. So if you're having a check engine light that's coming up anything EVAP system related Obviously first check your gas cap if it's old and deteriorated, they're seven bucks at the auto parts stores. Replace that. Otherwise, if you wanna go ahead and remove your EVAP canister, this is how you do it. Now obviously I've already done the EVAP bypass in my car, so if you have the EVAP system in your car, it's gonna be located right here behind the passenger side headlight adjuster. It'll be a black canister with a couple of hoses coming out of it. What you're gonna do is just slide it straight up off of this bracket disconnect all the hoses going to it there will be two hoses going over to this solenoid leave this connector connected to the solenoid and connect it into the car otherwise you will get the evap code on the dash next there will be a hose coming off of this hard line right here just to the left of the throttle body butterfly valve it'll go up to i think here and there will be another hose coming off of this hard line that is going to the bottom of the EVAP canister. All you're gonna do is leave this part connected and loop it over to this side here. It may also be easier to use one of the hoses coming off of the top of the can going over here and just connect it to the hard line and then loop it over to this other hard line that's coming straight up off of the frame rail here. Once that's looped and bypassed, you're pretty much done. The EVAP canister has now been deleted and you will not get an EVAP code because you've left the solenoid connected and everything should be fine. You may have a little bit of blow off pressure when you take your gas cap off from now on, but it's nothing to worry about. It won't cause any problems with the car and you should be fine. Any other hoses coming off of it going to the EVAP canister, just go ahead and plug them. It's pretty self-explanatory once you get the can out. Just make sure that line is looped and that any vacuum lines are plugged off. This one not so much because it just goes in and right back out. So don't worry about that. The next question he asked was how to disconnect the auto lockout mod. If you've ever noticed when you've locked your car doors on a Miata from the inside and you shut the door, then you come back to your car the next morning and your car's unlocked and you wonder why. Some people have figured out that you have to hold the handle on the outside of the door as you're shutting the car and let go of the handle. It's a 90s car thing where they were trying to prevent people from locking their keys on their car. It's on a lot of Hondas especially where you have to hold the exterior handle open as you shut the door so that you know that you're not locking your keys in the car and then it, that way if you realize as you're shutting the door that you do have your keys still in the car, you just let go of the handle and when the door shuts it'll automatically unlock itself. In the Miata, both sides do this. It's a very simple fix. There's two ways to do it. One is to pull the door panel off and go in from the inside of the door. Uh, it's a little difficult to do that way. I found another way to do it by rolling the window all the way down, getting the longest flathead screwdriver you can find, maybe even go to Harbor Freight and pick one up for a couple of bucks. You just need a really long flathead screwdriver with a nice wide tip on it. And you come in through the top of the door with the window down so it's easier to look in through the door and then adjust the lever as needed so that you can actually disable the lock mod. I'm not gonna do it on my car because I don't feel like pulling my panels to show you, but luckily I have some extra doors without the panels on them. So I'm gonna go to that and show you what I mean. All right, I'm not sure how well you can see this, but looking down from the top inside, you see the spring there. Just to the left of it, there's a little arm that's really hard to see from the top. You can see it from the inside of the door. You are gonna have to pull the door panels anyway just to get your head in there to see what you're hitting. But essentially, you've got to get a flat head or a pick or something that's long in there and pull out on that tab. 
see if I can see it from here. Just below this mechanism right here, just below it, you'll see that black bar with a kind of groove in it. Right. Right there. That bar goes up and over and it's kind of like an upside down L shape like this. You're going to come in from the top and get behind it and then pry it outward. And then when you move the mechanism, let me move the handle, you can kind of see it, that arm that moves up and down right there. When you pull the handle, it's to the left of that, that little L-shaped tab. That little tab right there. All right, because of how difficult it is to see inside the door panel, here's a photograph of the actual door lock mechanism. If you pull this mechanism out, obviously it's a lot easier to do, but it's a, more of a pain in the ass, I think, to pull the mechanism than it is to just get in there and dig around with a flathead until you can get to it. So here is the interior door panel. Here's the exterior side of the door panel. And there's that spring we were looking at a second ago from the top looking down. Here's that bracket I was talking about with the groove cut into it. Here's the actual door handle mechanism. So when it's locked, this right here will push down and let this pop back over and that's what unlocks the door. This tab is the tab that you need to get in from the top with a screwdriver and pry it out so that it doesn't come in contact with this mechanism here. This is the sliding mechanism that when you move the door handle from the outside of the card you'll see this moving up and down and that'll tell you where to look for this tab. So you have to get in there with either a pick or a flathead from inside the car and pry out on this thing enough to where you can get a large flathead up from the top and then you can just twist the flathead until this actual bar right here bends outward enough so that this doesn't come into contact with this when you move the actuator and it's locked. Be sure to test it before you put everything back together. Lock the door, shut it. If it still unlocks itself, you need to bend this out even further towards the front of the car. This can be done on both sides. Just look for this black metal tab with the groove in it right underneath the spring, directly below the lock mechanism spring. Once you pry that out and it doesn't come into contact with this anymore, your doors will shut and stay locked just like normal. You don't have to lock them from the outside or hold the handle while you're closing it to keep it from unlocking. That is the mechanism there. Just pry it out, make sure it doesn't come into contact with the sliding mechanism, and you're done. So all right guys, there you have it. If you have any other questions about Miatas or motorcycles or pretty much anything, if you're not real sure and you can't Google it yourself, ask me, I'll Google it for you. It's pretty simple to do. Same with the charcoal canister. It's fairly self-explanatory once you get in there and you start digging the parts out, just knowing to loop that line at the bottom and make sure you plug any holes that have been created in the intake manifold. Same with this, it's not so much that it's hard to do, it's just knowing where to pry and how to make it actually work. So if you have any comments or concerns, post them below. Be sure to check out my other video showing the raffle. I'm giving away the 1954 Harley motorcycle in a raffle. It's $20 a ticket, you got a one in 1,000 chance to win depending on how many tickets you buy. The more you buy, the better your odds. It will be given away. As long as we sell at least 1,000 tickets, There again, there's no limit. I just need to go ahead and get the funds to get the LS1 and the T56 into my Miata so that I'm ready for race season coming up this spring. Therefore, we can make better videos, more interesting content, and keep you guys entertained. So make sure you like if you like, subscribe if you want, and as always, guys, keep modding.